Testosterone makes us men, men, and without it we are just shells if we are supposed to be. Having higher testosterone levels will improve almost every aspect of your life. But there's a problem. When it comes to improving your testosterone levels, there's so much misinformation, bro science, and scams out there. So I want you to trust this is a full guide that you can follow with actionable steps that are backed up by facts and science. Number one is vitamins and minerals. If your body doesn't have enough vitamins and minerals and you're deficient in any one of these, then your body's not gonna be able to produce testosterone and then you'll be deficient in it. So which vitamins do we need to be eating? Chances are you're probably deficient in at least one of these vitamins, if not like half of them. Here's what you need to take. So vitamin D, zinc, magnesium, vitamin C, vitamin A, choline, betaine, vitamin K, vitamin E, and boron. Okay, so should we get our vitamins and minerals from food or should we get them from supplements? So I recommend for the most part, you just get them from food. And first of all, if you're gonna get supplements, don't get multivitamins or multi-minerals because the reason why is because the minerals and vitamins in your body, they compete for absorption in your body. So when you take like all of them at once, just in like one pill, chances are your body's just gonna only really absorb one of those minerals or vitamins and the other ones won't really, won't really be used. So you still might be deficient in other vitamins and minerals. Sadly, a lot of supplement companies are full of shit. So you don't really know what is exactly in your supplements, how much of the supplements you're getting. And a lot of times they lie. A lot of them are scams and it's really hard to find a good one out there. And the, the good ones are usually extremely expensive. I don't think supplements are the devil, but I would just recommend you follow this rule of thumb. So try to get around 70% to like 90% of your vitamins and minerals just from foods and then the rest you can do from supplements. And for time's sake, I'll create a list of all the foods you need to eat in order to get all your vitamins and minerals in and how much of those vitamins and minerals you need to eat and how much food you need to eat. And I'm just doing this for time's sake because this would take me like 10 minutes to explain. Number two is getting your fats in. This is the most important macronutrient when it comes to uh, testosterone optimization and just hormone health in general. Why fats are extremely important. So first of all, your body needs fats in order to produce testosterone. Fats also have cholesterol in them, and cholesterol is what your body uses in order to make testosterone. Also, your body needs healthy fats to reduce inflammation, and inflammation reduces testosterone. So your body has to use fat in order to produce all of your sex hormones, and obviously, we're talking about testosterone in this one. So a little tip that I have is eat some fats before you go to bed. So I just eat some salty nuts before I go to bed. I just eat some Brazil nuts and almonds before I go to bed. And the reason why is because your body produces most of its testosterone when you're asleep. So when you eat some fats before bed, it's just a good little way to make sure your body has the nutrients it needs before you're about to like produce testosterone in the night. So what should our diet look like? Should it be like a keto diet? Should it be a low carb diet? Should we, like what do we do? How should we structure our diet? Well, you wanna look at what reduces your testosterone and what harms your testosterone in your diet. So first of all is high amounts of sugar. So there's a study that showed that eating 75 grams of sugar reduces your testosterone by 25% for two hours. So if you're eating sugary snacks throughout the day, like every couple of hours, you're lowering your testosterone down by 25% every time you do this for two hours. So if you eat like sugary snacks, like every couple of hours, you're just constantly lowering your testosterone levels throughout the day. Next, you wanna to try to avoid seed oil. So this is like soybean oil, sunflower oil, cotton seed oil, rapeseed oil, grapeseed oil, rice oil, like, you know, pretty much any oil that comes from a seed is not gonna be good for testosterone levels. And one of the reasons why is because seed oils cause inflammation in your body and inflammation reduces your testosterone levels. So instead of cooking with seed oils, try to cook with some sort of butter, maybe like some sort of animal fat or ghee, which is like Indian butter. So eating a testosterone friendly diet, you wanna just mainly aim for single ingredient foods and get your vitamins in. So most of the foods we eat have just a bunch of crap put into them. Like weird preservatives, seed oils, high fructose corn syrups, all this stuff. And all of this causes inflammation and all these other hormone imbalances which lowers testosterone levels. And you wanna avoid the processed garbage that is available to a lot of us. Basically, we're just eating what we're meant to be eating. We're not meant to eat a bunch of chemicals that is put in our food. So when you go shopping or when you go shopping with your mom or I don't know, whatever, just aim for single ingredient foods like apple, steak, piece of bread, you know, like chicken, uh, asparagus, not like something with a bunch of weird chemicals and ingredients on the back because chances are it's probably not good for you at all. So pretty much just try not to eat any processed foods or like any sort of artificial foods or artificial sweeteners because all those 
sort of processed and artificial foods are terrible for your health and your testosterone. So just aim for single ingredient foods like chicken, apple, beef. Like the only ingredient in chicken is chicken. So try to just eat single ingredient foods. So I recommend that you eat the majority of your foods from proteins around like 60% and then the other 40% will be like 20% fats and 20% carbs. But obviously this doesn't have to be exact. It's just sort of a rough number to follow. Number four is sleep. And you probably hear this all the time from your parents or like just everyone says it on YouTube or whatever, but this is the most important one. The reason why is because your body produces almost all of its testosterone when you're asleep. So if your sleep sucks or if you don't get much sleep at all, then you're basically missing out on how much testosterone you can produce. And so step one to improve your sleep is to be in bed for longer. I know, it sounds like the most dumb shit ever, but think of it like this. So you think you get eight hours of sleep. You go to bed at 10 p.m., you wake up at 6 a.m., but chances are you're more likely getting around seven hours of sleep, maybe even six and a half hours of sleep. And the reason why is because it takes you like probably 30 minutes to fall asleep, and then you're probably waking up a couple times in the middle of the night. And then also, there's probably someone that wakes up earlier than you, like early in the morning, and they kind of wake you up before your alarm even goes off. So realistically, you're not getting eight hours of sleep. And that's why you feel tired when you get eight hours of sleep is because you're probably getting more like seven. All right, so here's how I improve my sleep quality. The first thing is you wanna make sure you're not mouth breathing. And the reason why is because if you're mouth breathing, you're probably snoring and that's causing you to have less oxygen when you sleep, which will cause sleep apnea and make you wake up more often. So the easiest way to do this is to just, first of all, reduce congestion in your nose. So you're not clogged up all the time. And also you can get this stuff called micro pore tape, or I don't know, I'll just put it on the screen. Tape you put on your mouth to basically prevent you from just mouth breathing. And you're not gonna suffocate from it. It's just gonna have that tiny bit of force just to keep your mouth closed. And it'll basically just make you breathe through your nose more often. And when you breathe through your nose when, when you're asleep, you're gonna get more airflow and you're gonna sleep better. So one of the best things you can do to improve your sleep is to reduce the amount of artificial light you get the amount of stimulation you're basically putting in your brain before you go to bed. So like all this artificial light, like, you know, Instagram, TikTok, video games, watching TV, watching those YouTube videos, they aren't gonna help you fall asleep. You're basically just stimulating your brain even more, which is the opposite of what you want before you go to bed. So just follow this rule. So an hour before you go to bed every single day, just don't use any sort of technology. And also the artificial light also messes with your ability to fall asleep. So try to reduce the amount of light that you're intaking around an hour or two before you go to bed. So like, just try to turn off as many lights as you can in your house. Try to just turn off as many lights as you can in your room. And if you do have a light on, try to just make sure it's not above your head and that it's like on a lower surface, like, you know, a foot above the ground. And it's like a more of a yellow kind of color of light and not like that super bright blue kind of color of light. You know, just around one hour before you go to bed, just reduce the amount of light you intake and do not use any technology. Now, the next thing you wanna do is, I've struggled with this a lot and I was overthinking and just, you know, being super anxious before I'd go to bed. You know, I'd be trying to fall asleep, but I'd just be stressed thinking about what I had to do tomorrow, the awkward moments that happened in high school, just a bunch of random shit, right? I was just thinking about a bunch of nonsense. So the easiest way to solve this um, is to pretty much just journal before you go to bed. So I just basically write down all my thoughts that are going on in my head. You know, it's the end of the day. I mean, you know, I'm kind of thinking a lot and I just write down all the thoughts that are going on in my head and just put it on a piece of paper. So I don't have to think about it when I go to bed. All my thoughts are just, you know, out of my head on a piece of paper instead. So another thing you can do is you can also just plan out your day before you go to bed. And I do this every single day. So instead of worrying about what you're gonna do the next day, just plan it out before you go to bed. And from this, you're gonna be a lot less worried about what you're gonna be doing, what you're thinking about, because you've already just done it. So now when you go to bed, there's not much to worry and think about. Okay, so stress. Stress is a killer of testosterone. And the reason why is because there's cortisol and cortisol is basically the opposite of testosterone. Cortisol reduces the amount of testosterone that your body produces. So the reason why is basically your body prioritizes either survival or reproduction not really both. So if your body is prioritizing survival, it's not gonna prioritize reproduction. If your body's prioritizing reproduction, obviously it's not gonna prioritize survival. So pretty much when your body thinks it's in survival mode or it's about to die or it needs to survive, it's not gonna prioritize making, you know, like sex hormones or reproductive hormones like testosterone because it has this bigger priority, which is not to die. 
And the thing is, when you're chronically stressed and you have a lot of cortisol from that stress, your body thinks it's in survival mode. Your body thinks it's in a bad place and it needs to go into like survival mode. So from that, it's basically gonna just shut off testosterone production for a little bit and focus on surviving and prioritizing what it needs to do. And from that, your testosterone level is gonna be lower. So really the main ways to reduce stress for me are pretty simple. Really what I do is I just, once again, I just journal out my thoughts and it really just gets all these like thoughts going on in my brain just on a piece of paper and I can just look at it like objectively and think about it from a logical viewpoint instead of just being worried about it so much. And then the next thing I do is I just meditate for a bit. So it's just a good way to clear your brain. It's pretty much just a good way to be more present in the moment and not all caught up in your head. So I do that every single day and I notice that helped with my stress reduction. And then also I do jujitsu and some sort of combat sports. So you know, just like fighting is a great way to reduce your stress. It works every single time. It's really simple. Or also just some sort of exercise it's, is chronic inflammation. So chronic inflammation, we're almost all chronically inflamed. It plummets your testosterone levels. And the reason why is because your body either prioritizes survival or reproduction. And when you're chronically inflamed or even just inflamed in general, your body is going to prioritize survival. And I'm not talking about inflammation from being sore like having sore muscles. It's more about like being sick, you know, constantly eating junk food. Common things that cause us to be chronically inflamed are usually just poor, highly processed food diets. So just look at your diet. If you're eating a lot of like, you know, corn syrups, uh, seed oils, junk foods, fried foods, processed foods, you're probably cl chronically inflamed. And what this does is your body prioritizes survival. So you're gonna stop producing testosterone because your body has other things to worry about. When you're chronically inflamed, testosterone will go down and estradiol will go up. And estradiol is basically like, you know, the response for more estrogen. So your testosterone will go down and your estrogen will start going up, which is bad. So what are the best natural ways to reduce inflammation? Well, first of all, let's think of the root cause of the problem. For most of us, it's from our diet and most of our diets suck. So don't eat a bunch of highly processed foods. You don't want to be eating a lot of seed oils, you know, a lot of high fructose corn syrup, a lot of just highly processed foods. And you know what I'm talking about, like a lot of those junk foods and just foods that are highly processed. You wanna aim for eating single ingredient foods that are more natural and very lowly processed. If you wanna take this to the next level, you could get a blood test and figure out which foods like cause you inflammation. So for me, mainly it's like gluten and dairy. And then there's some foods that also help you basically reduce your inflammation. So those are antioxidants. So like blackberries, raspberries, you know, citrus, pretty much any food that has a lot of vitamin C and antioxidants will help reduce inflammation, which will also help you increase your testosterone. All right, number seven is your body fat percentage. So there's really like a sweet spot for your body fat. And there's not like an exact number, but usually if you're too fat or if you're too lean, your testosterone levels are gonna plummet. So how does being too fat affect your testosterone levels? So if you're on 25, you know, to 30% body fat, which looks like this, you're gonna have more aromatase. And aromatase basically converts androgens into estrogen. So basically it just means more estrogen in your body. Now there's also a problem with being too low of a body fat percentage. So for most of us, this is probably around like, you know, 9% and below. And the reason why is because your body either prioritizes reproduction or survival. And when you're constantly in a huge calorie deficit, your body's gonna think you're basically starving and it's gonna start prioritizing survival instead of reproduction. So the healthiest body fat for most men is usually around like 12 to around 20% body fat. Now, this isn't an exact number, but it's just sort of a rough estimate to sort of give you an idea of where to be at. The next is your lifestyle and competition. All right, this is insane. So this graph shows basically the testosterone increase that chess players had when they were competing in chess. So pretty much you can see how the testosterone levels raised up, especially for the green one, player three. You can see that his testosterone levels were at around like 300 and then increased to around 600. And this is from playing chess. So this just shows that competition will have a huge spike in your testosterone for a short amount of time. Think of the caveman times. So pretty much the end goal for most cavemen was to clap cheeks and spit on their jeans. So pretty much there's competition within the tribe because not everyone could clap cheeks. Usually the top guy in the tribe, you know, like the, you know, the, the alpha male in the tribe would clap the most cheeks. So 
obviously there's competition to see who would be the best, to see who would be at the top of the tribe, you know, who would be the leader, right? And obviously the leader would get all the rewards, like clapping more cheeks. So over time, obviously competition is going to play a role in your ability to produce testosterone because when, there, when it's time to compete, your brain's basically going to signal you like, okay, it's time to be the best version of myself to basically release more testosterone so I can win. So obviously competition now is going to send a signal into your brain to basically start pumping out more testosterone. All right, number nine is endocrine disruptors. So what is an endocrine disruptor? So endocrine disruptors are basically things that reduce your testosterone's ability to bind to receptors. So this pretty much means you could have high testosterone levels, but you don't really feel the effects of it because it's not really being released from your body. So there's a lot of endocrine disruptors and sadly they're all around us, but there's two that are really bad. Number one is BPAs. So BPAs are pretty much in all plastics and those are endocrine disruptors. And this is a problem because so much of our food, so much of our water, so much of everything that we consume is covered in microplastics. So what I recommend is you just try to take out as much plastic as you can in your life. But right now, just get a piece of paper out and write down what you use every single day that is plastic. And you're probably gonna write like down a thousand things and it's pretty sad. So first of all, just try to replace things you eat out of with like non-plastic items, you know, like your thermos or your, you know, canteen. Try to get a metal one. Try to don't, try to not eat food out of plastic. Try to buy food that isn't wrapped in plastic. The worst thing you can do is to heat your foods in plastic. And this is because the BPAs become hyperactive so it gets even worse when you heat your food in plastic. So do not heat your food in plastic at all. And then also don't get nonstick pans. Those have endocrine disruptors. Pretty much just try to eliminate as much plastic as you can out of your life. Now another endocrine disruptor that is also super fucking bad are phthalates. So what are phthalates? So phthalates are pretty much another like endocrine disruptor and phthalates absorb into your skin very easily. Phthalates are pretty much the things that make plastic bendy, like think of a plastic bag or pretty much any sort of bendy piece of plastic. Phthalates are used in that, but they're also used for absorption. So think of cologne, deodorant, shampoos, face wash, um, pretty much just anything that you put on your body that's for like cosmetics or whatever, shaving cream. A lot of those have phthalates in them. And the reason why they have phthalates in them is so the scent can kind of absorb into your body so the smell stays on longer. But the problem is, is that the phthalates absorb into your skin and those endocrine disruptors are now like in your bloodstream, which is just horrible for you, right? So an easy thing you can do is just look at what you put on your body every single day. Look at the shampoos you use, look at the deodorants, look at the toothpastes you use, and look at the ingredients. A lot of them have a bunch of bullshit chemicals. So when you can, try to replace them with more natural alternatives because you don't wanna be putting plastic into your body. You don't wanna be putting these endocrine disruptors into your body because you could be doing everything right. You could have high testosterone levels, but you're not getting the effects that you want because there's all these endocrine disruptors in your body. Okay, so if you follow all the steps in this video, you'll see an increase in your testosterone levels and you'll just feel better overall. So I'll have a link in the description of all the actionable steps you can take. It also have all the different foods you can get to get your vitamins in and the amount of foods you need to eat and just pretty much everything you need to know so you can have a bunch of actionable steps. So you don't need to give me your email or anything. It's 100% free. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.